the industry is changing and certainly for the better. This is a time when the concept of mid-fi seems to be falling by the wayside because trickle-down technology is certainly at play here. With the release of the Spirit Torino Twin Pulse bringing such technicality and we already had a paradigm shift in the industry. Today, I am very, very pleased to bring you the review of something very interesting from a company based out of China, IO Audio. This is the Valare IEM triple set of drivers bringing such technicality to this price point that honestly, it's been quite breathtaking. Let's unpack. This unit will set you back $600. You are provided with a hefty box with a magnetic clasp. This really does remind me of the old school IER Z1Rs from Sony. Inside the lid is this beautiful velvet cover. It really, really does feel luxurious. We get a very large IEM faux leather case here. And then underneath this, we get three sets of drawers. We first of all remove the flap down and then the bottom drawer will give us our documentation. Let's pull this out here and place that there. The next drawer gives us a very large selection of tips and the top drawer gives us the cable and the adapters. So let's place that on top. Unpacking the accessories, starting with the adapters, we have a 4.4 connection which screws on. Nope, it clips on. These are pin connections, wonderful. We have a 3.5 and we have a 2.5 as well for those of you still using this balanced connector type. It's very fragile. I recommend moving to 4.4 or 3.5. Nestled within the fabric lining box, we get this beautiful silver plated uh, copper cable. If I can dig it out of here, pull that bit. Lift that, yank that out, pull this here, tug that out, and we're good to go. We're going to just take out the 4.4 balanced for now to demonstrate the easy adjustability of the connector type. As you can see, um, it's a bunch of pins, balanced, uh, ground, etc., right and left, and you just connect it like that and screw the adapter on like this, and there you go this beautiful braided cable, though it does have a little kink in the uh, braiding itself, but it does straighten out after a while. It's not too bad. It seems to be the longest IEM cable I've ever come across. This has got to be at least one meter 30 for those of you who are a little bit taller than others. Now looking at the tips, we have one, two, <laughs> three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 30, 14 sets of tips. All of this for this price category is first of all, the unboxing has been insane. We get a 6.3 to a 3.5 uh, female, obviously for bigger amplifiers supplied. I literally just saw that in the uh, box. I didn't even notice that previously. And then in here we get the documentation. Well done. This is honestly some unpacking experience at this price point category. Well done indeed. I am very, very impressed. This is the IEM box. It looks like a jewelry box for a ring. Maybe you can propose to your missus with this. Uh, and you open it like this, beautiful velvet lining. As you can see, very, very dense box. Beautiful IEMs sitting inside here, there is no room for the cable. This is problematic. You will never be able to use this unless it's just for demonstration purposes uh, on your desk or something, because you will have to detach the IEMs from the cable 
and doing that unfortunately two pin plugs wear out after a while this is kind of problematic this beautiful resin honestly i don't think pictures and photos and videos um a bit of a tautology there uh photos and videos does it justice because it shimmers as you change directions and have the light fall on it and you've got this beautiful face plate with the i and o sort of nestled on each side of the face plate up top somewhere here and we have a medium sized bore the bore inside this unit contains three sound modules obviously uh, this will impact how this thing sounds tremendously which we will discuss in the sound section very very pleased to say the underside of the IEM is designed like the super flagship IEMs this is designed like a custom IEM like QDC and also like sounds where it's the shape of a human ear no longer you get this flat sort of design anymore uh, I think our manufacturers are learning that we need something like this because the human ear inside the shell is certainly not flat so this sits like a custom it's absolutely fantastic for comfort that's the IEMs that's the cable nice design let's talk about the specifications the specification of the Valari is quite interesting. Specs scrolling down the screen now. Just under 5 ohm, 121 dB sensitivity. These are very, very finicky, or you think, to drive properly. We have a dynamic driver for the base response. We have four Sinyon BA drivers and four EST drivers for the treble region. You see this quite often in IEMs these days, uh, like the Chimera Nanas and Unique Melody and even QDC, the Tigers, which we reviewed here. All of them these days seems to have these multiple sets of drivers for each part of the frequency response and to give the drivers a specific target to concentrate on so that the drivers don't work too hard trying to cover every part of the frequency response. We do have electronic crossovers inside the unit and the implementation is nothing short of insanity at this level. Even the unique melody had issues with the crossovers because you could actually tell the difference between the dynamic driver, the ESTAT drivers and the BAs. Uh, QDC didn't have that issue fortunately and neither does this. The tonal balance is absolutely spectacular but we are jumping a little ahead. So, those are the specifications. Let's talk about drivability. These are around 4 ohms and obviously 120 dB sensitivity or thereabouts. And they're very, very easy to drive. And normally with these types of IEMs, you actually find synergy problematic, but not with these. I have been running them with the following. The Q-Style CMA18 Portable, review here. The Luxury and Precision P6 Pro to push these to the absolute limits. That $4,000 DAP, that is absolute insanity. Not only that, but dongles such as the M15 and the Apple Lightning dongle for the iPhone. And most of my use case has been with this, the IFI GoPods, to create a true wireless setup for these IEMs. The tips, as we showed earlier, a very large selection of them, none of them worked for my ears, and I found the frequency response to be quite uneven so with that let's jump on to the sound i am using the qdc tiger tips here and these have been absolutely perfect for these iems a perfectly balanced frequency response and a perfect seal these are rubber ones um, if you can get hold of them ideally i tried all of the foam and all of the tips that came supplied with this unit and some others as well these were the best ones i found for my ears and for the tuning your mileage will definitely vary bear that in mind i mentioned earlier that these iems are a paradigm shift in the industry after twin pulse we are getting to a point where honestly trying to sell trying to convey Reasons why you should buy a $2,500 IEM when something like this costs $600. When some of the others in the industry, such as these, this is the Moondrop Variations. And this one is a newcomer. 
this is the sounds blade there's a reason why i've put both of these on the table and that is in regards to what's happening to the industry and genuinely the performance we're getting sub $700. It's absolutely insane. To go back to the sound quality of this, 18 months ago to 22 months ago, these would have cost you $1,800, hands down. The sheer performance level of this is insane. Using these QDC tips, the rubber ones, you've got a neutral sound characteristics with a touch of slight darkness in the mid-range so that it's a little bit laid back in the mid-range. It gives space between you and the singer. Without a doubt, the biggest stage of any IEM under $1,000 I have experienced here at CMA. Bass response digs deep, all the way down to 25 hertz without rolling off. An open stage, excellent separation so that like this, there is a gap between each element of sound. Imagine this being the singer, imagine this being the drums behind it, and imagine this being the guitar next to it, like so, and we're gonna put a violin here. There is a gap between all of the elements of the instruments like so, so that you can pick out each individual one without any problem. This will not impeach this like this and yet layering like so is absolutely spectacular because of the gap you get between each element of sound it's extraordinarily technical i think we have finally surpassed the moondrop variations which has been my gold standard sub one thousand dollars for technicality tonal balance and frequency response these iems dig so low that EDM lovers will not miss a thing. Honestly, the authority, weight and size of instruments, the air up there, and due to the three sound nozzles inside the bore, you get true elevation of height, and with the separation I mentioned, and the beautiful layering, you get quite an experience with things like Infected Mushroom and Monster Cat and such bands in this genre of music now you think okay this is quite bass heavy in the sub bass category and the lower mid bass category but does that translate to rock and metal does it make it overly bloomy no in fact it doesn't bands like alter bridge nirvana tesseract and many others periphery liquid tension experiment animals as leaders where the electric guitars and drums and an underlying bass player is all articulate and very well layered, the IEMs take everything back a step so that the kick drum does not become overly bloomy, but it has tremendous weight and tonal density, where a clean bass sound from a bassist is easily identifiable, Every note is distinct and articulate and clean. The drivers are very, very clean on this unit as well. This, without a doubt, now I think surpasses Twin Pulse for price to performance ratio and technicality. That is $1,100. It's a bit more technical than this. It scales a little bit more than this and it's a bit more resolving, but you are paying $550 more than this, so pretty much double the price. That is where you would want to jump to next, but because it's a semi-open design, it makes the use case scenario a bit tricky. It requires a tremendous amount of good equipment to drive it well, not get it loud, um, and this doesn't. This reminds me of the ZMF Atrium we reviewed here. It's got that tonality. It's got that kind of sub bass, that kind of sub bass extension, that kind of slam, and that kind of articulation. For classical music from John Williams and Hans Zimmer, that open stage and airiness truly helps the environment those instruments are recorded in. So for technicality, it's very good. For tonality, it's very good. For genre boundaries, it's very good. It's a fantastic all-rounder that is comfortable, that is affordable, 
and that has become the golden standard for CMA under $1,000. But what about the blade? And what about Moondrop variations? I think this is in line with these two IEMs. This one, the blade is a little bit more holographic and possibly a little bit more technical and reference sounding. This one's got a touch of fun about it, but only a smidgen. A little bit of that oomph in the low end. So that, honestly, the size of the images surpasses both of these by a significant margin. And having that dynamic driver for the bass response and the EST drivers for the um, treble region, I think Blade is a little bit more resolving and a bit more 3D and holographic. I think Variations has more of a brighter mid-range and possibly for some people might be a better, slightly better tonal balance for their own frequency response of their own hearing. But honestly, the Volare, I think I'm butchering this name as well, by the way, is the perfect balance of all three and neither of them have the bass response of this or the stage of this, or the sheer weight and tonal density of this. Vocals are very present, every instrument is very present, and I think timbre, without a doubt, is the best out of the three. I have been shocked by this. As you can see, my Cadenza 12 is not in here. I've decided to use them wired again with my Luxury and Precision P6 Pro. And I honestly am having difficulty suggesting you should buy those over this because they sort of share the same tonality and spending roughly $1,800 more. The fit is truly fantastic. The build quality is beautiful. The accessory is fantastic. In conclusion, IO Audio have absolutely nailed this and come out of the gate swinging for their first high end in their category IEMs. Well done, I can't wait to see your next one. What are the caveats of this? Uh, some caveats, I would say the case needs a lot more work because you can't put it in there with the cable. And so therefore it's more of a jewelry type of thing on your desk, just to put IEMs in there. And detaching and uh, attaching the cable could damage this the IEMs, genuinely. So this is more of a nicer looking thing, but it's so thick inside, just half the material in here and you can put a cable in here, or half the material in here and you can just put a cable underneath. This one needs work. The cable is decent for this price point, definitely better than variations, but I don't think it's as nice as the one in Blade. It's a little bit thinner and just a bit more ergonomic but it's very, very decent in regards to swapping the tip. This is truly fantastic. Stick with this. But the cable, I think, yeah, the cable I think is decent enough. It's not bad. Uh, over the ear parts are a little bit, I don't know, I, I prefer something a little bit thinner, but that's, that's subjective. But subjectivity aside, sonically and hardware-wise, what don't I like about these? Absolutely nothing at this price point. I could ask for a little bit more resolution to tie this up with the QDC Tigers, but those are $1,800, okay? And they're probably about 3% more resolving. What else? For my use case, I needed the QDC tips, but they've provided 10 tips for you, so I'm sure you'll find something in there, possibly. For $599, Right now in the industry, you'll not find anything better unless you're specifically looking for something that is a little bit different. An all-round IEM. Hardware, accessories, sound quality, and price point. Five Tigers out of five. There's a very good chance one of these two, between this and the Blade, will win an award from CMA this year. But this is the IEM world right now, where every month something new comes out and destroys the previous. But until that point, these will stay at CMA as the reference under $1,000. If you like reviews such as these, consider joining Patreon, where early reviews 
are posted there first before YouTube, you get to join the private Telegram chat and can speak to me and the rest of the CMA viewers that reside there and support the channel. And we can talk about equipment. And if you've got any questions, put it down below. Do you own these? Are you excited about these? Let me know. Otherwise, your like, your share is all I require from you. It's really important and it really does help out the channel. There are videos on the channel that have 7,000 views, 10,000 views, 15,000 views, but the likes or dislikes is not even at 3% of the viewership. So please, it really does help us. It gets us out of the algorithm's feet and it really does help the channel grow. So headbutt that like button and kick the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Otherwise, you will miss the next review. Until then, peace.